everyone. This is Reza Dorani. Welcome to the approval cookbook series focused around the approval action and flow. In this video, we will look at the basics for the approval action. We will focus on the different types of approvals. We will look at how we can capture the outcome of the approval in various scenarios and also how we can perform approvals on the go. That is, we can perform approvals either through the flow action center or through our emails through actionable messages or through the mobile app for Power Automate or through Microsoft Teams. So let's not waste any time and get straight into this video. The approval action and flow is a built-in action that you can leverage for approval scenarios. It can be customized to fit your business needs. You can define various patterns of approvals like sequential approvals, parallel approvals, state machine approvals, so and so forth. Multiple approval type options are provided out of the box as part of this action. Also, external users can be added as approvers in your approval process. There are multiple ways in which you can perform approvals using the approval action in Flow. You can go to the approval dashboard, which is like your one-stop shop for all your approvals. You can see all your, the approvals that you have sent or received, and you can also see the historical requests associated with your approvals. You can take decisions on approval actions directly from your inbox through something known as actionable messaging. You can also leverage the Power Automate mobile app to respond to an approval action. And finally, you can also take a decision on your approval action directly from Microsoft Teams. In this scenario, I have a very simple flow that triggers manually. The goal here is to understand the approval action. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new step and search for approval. And right here we have the approvals connector which gives us the three basic actions that are available as part of this connector. The first one is called start and wait for an approval, which basically begins the approval and waits until it receives the outcome for that approval action. The alternative to this is create an approval, which basically creates an approval, but does not wait in the flow. The action does not wait. The flow just moves ahead. You can perform additional operations then after you create the approval, and then you can later on go ahead and wait for an approval by calling the wait for an approval action. Now in this scenario, I'm gonna pick start and wait for an approval first. And right here, the first option that opens up is the type of the approval. Let's explore all the floor approval types and their associated properties. So the first type that we're gonna explore is approve or reject first to respond. It's the simplest type of the approval action. And of course, as the name itself suggests, the approval type is called approve reject. That means the approvers will only and only get these two options, approve or reject, that's it. And first to respond means the first approver who responds to this approval action, their decision will be taken into consideration. What are the different properties associated with my approval action? And these properties are the same for any approval type. First thing is the title of my approval. I'm gonna call this sample approval. Now assign to is where you need to go ahead and define all your approvers. In the assign to field, you can either enter the email ID of your approver or the user principal name of your approver or the Azure Active Directory object ID of your approver. All three are acceptable. You cannot add group email IDs right here. So Azure AD groups, Office 365 groups, you cannot do that. Only and only user personas are allowed out here. Now in this scenario, I will go and pick Reza and I will pick another user called Sarah as my approvers to this process. Details is where you provide the details of your approval. In this scenario, I'm just gonna keep it simple and call it approval details. Item link is if you're performing an approval on a specific item, you can put the link to the item right here. You can even describe the item right here. The other option is show advanced options. Now, if you open this, there are additional properties that show up. Property number one is called requester. Now, typically when the approval action goes out, the account of the user who has created the flow, that user's name would go in as the requester by default. Now, if you would like to change that, you can do that right here. So even though Reza is going to start this flow, if I would like to define some other user as the requester, I can do that. In my scenario, I'm gonna pick a user called James as the requester. Now, please note, requester is the person who is making a request for this approval. However, Reza is still the creator of this approval. And I will show you that when we get those approval actions. 
Enable notifications basically defines whether the approvers need to be notified about this or not. So you can turn it off if you do not want to notify them. Enable reassignment basically defines whether or not those approvers can reassign their task to some other user in the organization and they can pick any user in the organization. You cannot change that. So in this case, I'm going to set this as no, I don't want to enable reassignment. You can go ahead and add attachments to your approval process. So let's say there are attachments that you want to share along with the approval process. All those attachments can go in here and you can add multiple attachments right here. As part of this approval video series, we have a lot more coming. I will cover all the attachment aspects in detail later on. In this case, we're going to keep it very simple. Okay. So we've got my start and wait for an approval action defined and the approval type is first to respond. That means although I have multiple approvers, I may even have one approver doesn't matter. The first person who responds, their decision will be counted. Now the next step is I'm going to add a new step and add a condition. Now in this condition, I need to, I need to check what's the outcome of my approval and the dynamic content associated with the start and wait for an approval action right here that I'm looking out for is called outcome. Outcome basically tells me what's the outcome of this approval. Now, once again, please note, this is called approve, reject, first to respond. These are the name of the buttons that the approvers will get approve or reject. In my case, I'm going to check this outcome. So what is the outcome? Is the outcome approve or reject? Please note, it is not approved, approve or reject. I have gone ahead and picked approve. Now, right here, because this is just a demo, I'm going to add a compose action and right here, I'm going to put the value approved reject. So basically this flow just sends out an approval action and then checks the outcome and accordingly goes into the yes branch or the no branch. And we can take additional actions later on, depending upon the response of my approval action. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's go to test and I'm going to run this flow right now. Now this basically kicks off the flow. And the first thing I want you to observe is the flow is currently running. The flow has started and it is waiting for an approval action. Let's go ahead and look at how we can take a decision on the approval action. Remember I said there are four ways in which users can take a decision on the approval action. By default, you get three ways directly to use from. The first option is called the approval dashboard. And the way you can get to the approval dashboard is on the left hand navigation, there's an option called action items. And right here, there's something known as approvals. This basically is your approval dashboard. I am logged in as Reza. So Reza just received an approval action called sample approval first to respond. It gives me when did Reza receive that approval, what date, what time, how many seconds ago, the details of the approval and the name of the requester. Now remember, although Reza created the approval, he, he added James as the requester. That's why I see James's name right here. Now right here is where I can perform my three actions. I can either approve this, I can reject this, or I can go to more commands and I can see what additional options I have right here. Now, if you remember, I had turned off reassignment. That's the reason why I don't see the option right here to reassign. Now I can either approve or I can either reject. Additionally, I can even click on this and this will open this approval card for me right here that I can choose from. It shows me the overview of the approval. It shows me the details of the approval and right here I can take my decision. If I would have directly selected approve, it would still open the same card. Just pre-select approve for me. Whether I pick approve or whether I pick reject, both the times I get this option wherein I can add a command. These commands are optional and this form that you see right here, wherein you get this command option cannot be customized currently. These are the only two options approve or reject and the command is all what you get. Now at the same time, let's go ahead and check how Sarah gets the approval action. Now Sarah is using outlook. This is option number two for the user to take a decision on approval. Of course, Sarah can also go to her approval dashboard. In this scenario, Sarah is using her email and through something known as actionable messaging, Sarah directly gets this kind of an adaptive card right here, wherein she gets the approval action. So she can see all the details related to the approval action requested by James. Remember I said you cannot change the creator created by Reza. It still shows up. When was it created? Now, please note this date created as well cannot be modified to any specific time zone of your choice. By default, this shows up in UTC and this cannot be changed. Details is basically the details of the approval. Sarah can now either approve or reject right here within the email itself directly. This is called actionable messaging. So a decision can be made right here by Sarah. Also notice right here, I don't have the 
reassignment option. Now we did turn off reassignment in this case, but even if it was turned on, you cannot reassign through the email. You have to go to the approval dashboard in order to reassign. In this scenario, let's say Sarah goes ahead and Sarah says, okay, and Sarah approves this. Now the moment Sarah hits the submit button, this is recorded. The approval card closes because the decision has been made by Sarah. If we go back to the flow, you will notice that the flow has moved ahead. In fact, it's gone ahead and completed. However, let's look at what happens to the action that was associated with Reza, the approval action. So if Reza now goes to the approval dashboard, notice that he does not even see that approval action. That's because the decision has already been taken. First to respond, the first person has already responded. Now, if Reza goes to his email, right here, if you notice, if I click on this, I see approve or reject, but notice the card just immediately closed because it says others have already completed this request. Now, even if I had it open before beforehand, and if, you know, just let's say in the next second, I went ahead and took my decision, it will give me the message that it cannot record your decision because the outcome has already been taken into consideration. It won't tell you what the outcome is, but it will tell you that it has been taken into consideration. That means the approval process is complete. Now heading back to the flow, start and wait for an approval right here, took four minutes to complete. And then I have a condition right here. Remember in the condition I was checking to see the outcome and I checked for the word approve. If it was yes, it was going to go into the yes branch and right here it's gone ahead into the yes branch. Had either of Reza or Sarah rejected it, it would have gone into the rejected branch, which is the no case. Let's also look at the body of this approval action and let's just analyze this a little bit. So right here is the body of the approval action. Notice there's a property called responses. And as part of the responses property, we have an array right here. That's because the responses are coming from approvers. In this case, of course, first to respond, so only one response will be countered. Still, the output is always an array. It will only have one item in this array. And right here is the item. Sarah had taken the decision. Here is the requested date, the response date, the response, as well as the comments that Sarah had provided. So all the details is right here. And that main property that I'm looking out for is outcome, which gives me one value. It's a string, either approve or reject. That's all it will give me because I picked the action first to respond. Now let's go ahead and change this flow and pick a different approval type. This time I want to change this to everyone must approve. The scenario is exactly the same. It's the same users, the same description, everything's the same. I'm not changing anything else. That's because all the properties are the same. And one change though, I will go ahead and make. Now this time I said, everyone must approve. So let's change the title as well to everyone must approve. Now there is a difference between everyone must approve and first to respond. Everyone must approve means the action will keep waiting until each and every approver says approve. That means it will wait for Reza to say approve. It will wait for Sarah to say approve. The action will not move ahead. However, if either of Reza or Sarah rejects it, it will stand rejected. Why? Because everyone has to say approved. Even one says rejected, it's rejected. That's how this action works. So in this scenario, the condition that I'm checking, which is outcome is equal to approve will not work. And I will tell you why, when we will look at the output JSON of this action. So the way I work this is I check to see if the outcome does not contain the word reject. Okay. I am checking to see if the outcome, which is the string, it should not contain the word reject. Why? Because if everybody has approved it, that string will be approve, comma, approve, comma, approve. And I'll show it to you in the output. If any one of them rejects it, you will have the word reject in there. Now let's go ahead and test this one out. Okay, so I have gone ahead and triggered this flow. This flow is going to start. It will go to the approval action. And once again, it goes to wait. However, there is a difference now. Let's check it out. Reza gets the approval action right here. And let's say Reza goes ahead and says, yep, I'm going to approve this. Reza approved. It's my comments right now. And I will go ahead and confirm this. Now, if we head back to the flow, in the previous case, the flow would have moved ahead because first to respond. In this case, it's still waiting. Why? It's still waiting to see Sarah's decision. Now, let's log in as Sarah. This is the email that Sarah receives. And let's say Sarah goes ahead and says, Sarah approved is her comments. And Sarah also goes ahead and approves it. 
So both Reza and Sarah have approved. And the process says that once everyone has approved, only then the process is complete or if any one of them has rejected it. In this case, both approved, the process moves ahead. The condition, if you remember, I was checking to see does the outcome not contain the word reject? It does not. And that's why it goes into the yes branch, which is my approved scenario. This time, let's go ahead and grab the body of this action. This is very important to understand, and that's why I'm trying to show the JSON associated with it. In this case, if you note, the responses is still an array, but this time I have two responses. Why? Because the flow is waiting for both the responses as long as the responses that keep coming in are approved. Now, Reza said approve. Here's Reza's comments. Sarah said approved. Here's Sarah's comments. And here is the summary of the response if you want the entire summary in one go. Now, notice the outcome. The outcome is not a single string. In this case, it's approve, comma, approve. So if you do is equal to approve, it's not going to work. That's the reason why I was checking to see, does this outcome not contain a reject? If there is no reject, that means all of them have to be approved. Okay, let's go ahead and replay this flow again. And this time let's play a different scenario. This time, let's say the first person goes ahead and rejects it. So this is the approval action that Reza has got. And let's say Reza goes ahead and rejects it. So Reza is going ahead and Reza is rejecting this. Now when Reza rejects this, if Sarah tries to access the approval action, notice it says the process is already complete. Why is the process complete? Because everyone must approve. One person has rejected it, so that's it. This approval action is finished. Now if I head back to flow, notice that this action has completed, it's gone into the condition, and it says rejected. Why? Because I'm checking to see if the outcome does not contain the word reject, but it does. And how do I know that? Well, let's look at the body again. Right here, if you notice, we just got one response, that, and that response was reject. So the outcome is basically reject. Let's say if I replay this and let's say Reza approves it, the flow will still be running because it's still waiting for Sarah's response. And if Sarah rejects it, the flow will complete. Why? Because if any member rejects, it's rejected. In that case, I will have two responses, one which will be approved and one which will be reject. Now let's look at the third approval type. This one is called custom responses, wait for all responses. Now, this is very similar to everyone must approve, but but the differences between everyone must approve and wait for all responses are, the first difference is custom responses. So you are not limited to approve or reject. Of course, you can add approve, reject if you want to, but you're not limited to that. You can keep adding as many options as you want. There are limitations though. The Outlook client will only show the first five outcome types. So don't go beyond five is my recommendation. The second difference is everyone must approve. This action will be complete when any one of those approvers rejects it. Why? Because it's waiting for everybody to approve. However, wait for all responses is different. It will wait for every approver to take their decision, no matter what that decision is. Approve or reject, it doesn't matter. So let's check this in action. I'm gonna pick wait for all responses, very similar to our previous one, but with a little bit of differences. All the other properties are the same. You just get this one additional property because you need to define what your custom responses are. Now I can define approve. I can define reject and additionally, I can define any other options that I want. So let's say deferred, I'm adding a third option. You can define your own custom responses right here. Now let's say in this case, I want to check to see if it is approved or it is reject or it is deferred. Now that depends upon you, how you want to play it out in your flow. Now in my case, let's say all I want to check is that none of them have rejected it. So what do I do? The same option applies. If the outcome does not contain reject, why? Because I'm going to get a string. I'm going to get a string for each approver's response, which will be a part of that outcome property. If it does not contain reject, right? Then in that case, it must be either approved or the other option that I have, which is deferred, deferred. And of course I can go ahead and add additional logic to check those values as well. And we'll cover those in later scenarios. Right now I just want to show you the action and how it plays out. So I will go ahead and run this flow. So in this case, Reza gets the approval action right here. Now remember, it's waiting for all responses. Now I have three options here. These are my custom options. And let's say Reza says, yeah, reject. No, that's my comment. I'm going to reject this. Now, even though Reza rejects this, you notice this is still waiting. It will wait for each and every approver to take their decision. Now here is Sarah. 
Sarah gets those three options right here in the email and she can take any decision of her choice, approve, reject, or defer. And let's say Sarah goes ahead and says, okay, I approve this. Now that every approver in this process has taken their decision, only now will this process move ahead. And of course, because there was one reject, as I rejected it, this process would be rejected. Once again, let's look at the outcome of our approval action. Right here, it's an array. Reza had rejected, comments was no. Sarah said approved, comments was okay. The outcome is a string, but remember, it's gonna give me all the values this time. It's gonna be each and every approver's decision, reject and approve. Now let's go ahead and look at the final option right here. And this one is wait for one response. So very similar to first to respond. Very similar to that. However, the only difference in this case is you have custom responses. So I'm gonna pick this. And once again, this will give me the options for custom responses. Let's say I go ahead and say yes, and I say no. And in this case, remember the outcome is always gonna be one value because it's just waiting for one response. So I know that I have to change my condition now. So I'm gonna say, okay, if this is equal to yes, now I have to use the word yes because that is my custom option. There is no approve or reject right here. Let's go ahead and run this. And while running this, I'll show you the third option where the approvers can take their decision. Okay, so you're on my mobile app. I actually received a notification as well as if I head over to the approvals tab here on the top, you will notice that I get this same approval action right here and I can respond directly from my mobile device as well. This is Reza trying to respond and notice here the respond to request. I have three options. Yes, no, or reassign. In this case, I will just go ahead and say yes. That's my decision. At the bottom, there's an option for me to add a comment. I can say all okay. I'm gonna hit confirm directly from my mobile app. Even though Sarah received that approval action, that action is complete because the action was, the f it will wait for one response. It's already gotten that response and it's gone ahead. It will check to see if the response in this case was yes or no, it was yes. So it goes into the yes branch. And let's look at the body in this scenario, just to analyze it further. Here are the responses that I have received. Only one response, of course, but it's still an array. And it gives me one object right here. And that response was yes. Reza said, all okay. The final outcome is yes. And it will always be one value in the string, which is the outcome of the different options that you've provided to the user. Now let's go ahead and explore the other approval action. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. And instead of start and wait for an approval this time, I'm gonna go ahead and use, I will go ahead and once again, go to approvals. And this time we will pick create an approval. Now create an approval is very similar to start and wait for an approval action. But there is one key difference is that the flow will not wait after this action. It will directly move ahead to the next action of the flow. So it says create an approval. All the options here are the same, nothing changes. I'm gonna keep this very simple because we're just trying to focus on what I can do right here. So I'm gonna pick first to respond. I have created the approval, but I also need to wait for the approval decision. However, the advantage that this action gives me over the start and wait for an approval is I can take additional steps in my flow. Maybe I need to update my system of record. Maybe I need to also send a email notification to a group when this approval process begins. Maybe I have some other use case. Any steps that you have, you can plug them right here. Now in my scenario, I wanna actually go ahead and show you the fourth option through which your users can take the approval decision. So I will go ahead and add an action. I will go to Microsoft Teams and search for adaptive card. Now the option that I'm looking out here is post your own adaptive card as the flow bot to a user. Now this action is in preview, so please be aware of this, but I'm gonna pick this action right here. And the moment I pick this action, I need to define the recipient of this action. Of course, it should be my approver, which is Reza, so I'm gonna pick Reza. The message is basically the adaptive card. Now, the beauty of this approval action is it automatically generates the adaptive card for you, so there is no hard work that is required whatsoever. Just go to dynamic content and search for adaptive card. And just put the adaptive card right here. You can also give a summary of what this approval action is. You can also send an alert to the user. I will go ahead and say yes. And this is a sample approval action is my summary. That's it. So I've just posted an adaptive card as the flow bot to a user. The next thing is I want to go ahead and wait for approval. Now notice if I run this flow, it will create the approval action. It will send the adaptive card, but the flow will go ahead and, and complete itself. But I want to wait for the approval decision so I can 
add a condition and then perform additional logic. So in this case, I'm going to go and add an action. And this is where I will go back to the approvals connector and this time pick wait for an approval. Now, when you pick wait for an approval, it requires the ID of the approval that you're trying to wait for. That is going to be the ID of the approval that I created in the preceding step. So right here, I'm going to search for approval ID and it's right here. That's all you need. So this will create the action, then straight away move ahead. This will post that adaptive card, which will basically give the fourth option that I was talking about, wherein a user can give their decision regarding an approval. And right here, I am waiting for the approval. And after this, I have a condition. I am going to check the outcome, which will come from the wait and approval action. So I'm going to pick this. Remember, this will only give me approve or reject because the approval type that I picked was approve reject. So let's go ahead and test this. And let's look at this flow in action now. It will create the approval. It will send the notifications out. So Reza will get an email. Here is Reza's email. If Reza goes to the approval dashboard, Reza should see that approval action right here. Of course, on the mobile app also, I have got my notification. But now apart from all of these, I will also get an adaptive card in Teams wherein I can take my approval decision. So if I go to Teams, there's something known as the flow board that will automatically come alive. And that flow board will send me an adaptive card. And here is that adaptive card with all the details for me. And I can approve and reject right here in Teams as well. So you can meet your users wherever they are. Back to the flow, please note the create an approval action did not initiate a wait. It went ahead. It did the next step. It will keep doing it until it gets to the wait for an approval. If there is no wait for an approval, the flow will end. That's it. That means even if the approval decision is taken, nothing's going to happen after that. That's because you've not waited for it in your flow. So in my scenario, I am waiting for it right here. Now, if I head back to teams, because I want to show you the team scenario, I can either approve or reject it right here. I'm going to say, okay, same comments dialog opens. It's I'm going to click on submit. And notice the moment I submit, that decision will be recorded. The flow will take that decision into account and it will move ahead and it will check the condition. It's approved. It goes into the yes branch. The same responses are right here. We can plug this in Visual Studio Code. Here is the approval response, which is approved and the comments was okay. And Reza had taken that decision. Now, the next thing is if you need the details out of that approval action. So for example, right here, we have these responses. This is the body of the approval outcome. If you need those details, let's go ahead and see what we can do right here. So I'm going to go back to my compose action right here. We're going to add additional attributes out here. So we get all these responses from the approval action. You get a summary of the response. You get the outcome of the response, the ID of the approval, the details of the approval, the request date, all information that you need is right here. Even the commands, everything is right here. And many a times, whenever you pick something, you would have noticed this. So let's say if I pick the comments, right? So if I pick responses, comments, the comments added by the approver, the moment you pick this, you will note that it adds an apply to each for loop. And the reason why it adds this apply to each for loop is once again out in the, in the JSON itself. If you notice the responses property in this JSON object is of type array. And whenever there is an array, flow automatically adds a loop around it. So even though there might be just one response, there could be more than one responses. We've seen that before. That's the reason why you get this array. And if you want to read any of these properties, and that's exactly what I requested for, I was looking in this case, I was looking out for the responses comments. And notice if I hover on this, it gives me the code associated with it, which is items applied to each comments. And why is it associating itself to, with comments is because comments is the property in this responses object. So all of this is already handled for you. You don't have to worry about how this JSON is structured. However, it's very important to note why that for loop gets added when you pick any of these properties associated with it. However, if I pick any of the other properties that are outside of this array spectrum, so if I pick a response summary or outcome or the title of my approval, I will not get the for loop. So in this video, we've looked at the basics of the approval actions. The approval action is a standard connector in flow that you can leverage for your approval scenarios. There are four types of approval scenarios that you can choose from. You also have approvals on the go. You can take your approval decisions from the approval dashboard or through your email, through actionable messaging, through the Power Automate mobile app, and finally also through Microsoft Teams. So this was part one of the approval cookbook series. 
Do like, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel and see you in part two.